Welcome to project two of our MEC 410 class on machine design. For this project, you're going to design a garage door opener mechanism. And specifically, you're going to redesign the old one that's in my house. In order to do this, you'll be analyzing and specifying a worm and gear assembly and an AC motor for supplying power. There's a chain and sprocket that has to be picked out. You have a tension spring and pulley and a bolted frame. Here in the center upper part of this slide is a view of the inside of the door with an overhead motor, rail, and chain assembly. And in the upper left, you see the door sliding on some wheels inside an upper frame. You see a side view of the motor assembly housing which is connected to the ceiling of the garage, the chain and sprocket that's on top of the motor assembly housing, the frame that's bolted to the garage door that is attached to the door lever and slider shown in the lower right, and on the upper right you see the left side rail for the tension spring and that tension spring essentially acts as a counterbalance for the weight of the door when the motor starts to pull the door up. And to assist you further, I've created a live video of my garage and I'd like to show it to you next. We are standing in my driveway and staring at my one car garage. So I'm gonna walk into the garage. Car of course is gone. You're staring at the electrical transformer box now that takes power in from the street. And we're going to get a view of the garage door and the garage door opener. And then I'm going to run the system and then you'll get a sense for how the sub mechanisms of this garage door opener work. It means it takes 120 volts and 60 hertz going into a 15 amp circuit drawn 6 amps of current. Pretty old fashioned stuff actually has some potentiometers here to adjust the up and down forces but we won't actually be getting into that because I don't really know how all the electronics inside works. What I'm going to do is just open and close the mechanism uh, time and time again and repeat the basics of how the system works. So the system's open, door is closing. Most of the force on the door is applied with this chain system. There is a chain and it's attached to this bracket here, which I'll point out. Bracket, chain, sliding mechanism. There is a tensioning spring up here. And the basic idea is that as the motor rotates, it's right there. And as that gear motor, which is down in the box, rotates this very small sprocket, the chain rotates. What you'll see in a minute is that this lever pulls on the door and pulls the door up and pulls the door ever and ever closer to the control box until the system says, you have opened the door enough and of course the door is open about six feet enough to get even an SUV out and in and when we go in the opposite direction to close the door all we do is drive the chain in the opposite direction essentially the bracket is going in the opposite direction which wants to pull the door down now you're probably wondering what this little red handle is Sometimes you can have a power outage and then you can't get out of your own garage. So if I were to pull on this mechanism, what you can see now is I can actually open the door with my left hand and slide it open and basically give the door the force that normally the motor is giving it. If I manually pull the door and shut it, and reconnect my system, I should be able to have it go back to power on motion. Okay, so that's all that right handles the back. Now the slider has on it a mechanism that slides on this black track. You probably can see it on the bearing grease. 
And that's because the slider itself has to slide along this I-shaped metal track that's actually cut in a couple of sections and connected in the middle. And not only do we have that, let me close the door again so we can get a better view. But we also have a scenario where the chain is connected through the slider mechanism to a cable. And the cable goes up on a pulley up here. You can see that right there. And the cable goes around the other side. So when the door is closed, what you have on my right side is the cable, and on the left side is the chain. And then as the door opens, basically they trade places. As the door pulls up, the chain moves and the cable moves first. In addition to this core system, we have a couple of brackets. And all these brackets are doing is they're fixed stationary brackets, which basically connect my slider mechanism to my garage door. They have a nice couple of bolts on them that go right into the garage door. And because there's a pretty large force, you can imagine these are not small bolts. We have a symmetric situation in that we do have rail guides here for small rollers that are connected on the left side of the door and on the right side of the door. So what all of these roller systems do is balancing the load on the left and right of the door so that the door can balance and come up without too much friction. So let's watch what happens on these roller mechanisms as the door opens. You can see that the roller is basically sliding in that metal track. And we have the top roller is in the top track. The second roller is in the lower track. Third roller in the lower track. Fourth roller in the roller track and this bottom roller in the roller track. You have to be able to pull, not only in the middle of the uh, door, but you have to pull up on the left and right. And so what we have on the other side of this track, is we do have a pulley assembly. And here is the bottom left of the door. There is a moving cable. There is a pulley. And that pulley, is pulling a tensioning spring. And what the tensioning spring does is this. As the door opens, the pulley moves and this extension spring collapses. Now what that does is it allows a force from that extension spring to be applied to the left and the right of the door because there's one of these extension springs connected into the track as I show you here on the left side of the door and there's another tensioning spring that of course I'm not showing you on the opposite side of the door as the door closes the spring pulls out and what that does is it de-accelerates the motion of the door closing and when we go to open the door, and of course when you open the door you've got to overcome the force of gravity because you are pulling the door from this vertical position and bringing it up to this horizontal position. Now these tensioning springs are compressing, which means all that potential energy in the, in the uh, tensioning spring actually helps you lift the door. Here and a pulley and the pulley is pulling on the uh, tensioning spring. Here is your two loops of the tensioning spring and there's a nice little bracket on the pulley that is right in the middle of these last uh, two loops. And if you see where this actual cable is mounted, the cable actually mounts to a bracket and that steel bracket is mounted directly to the door. I'm showing you the right side of the door, but it's a symmetric problem and for any calculation you do, you just have to do it once. But just be, be advised that the entire load of the door is shared uh, left and right. So that uh, you're pulling up on the door, but you got roughly equal forces on left 
and right side of the door and exactly the same mechanism that's balancing the door and essentially keeping the whole door from wanting to rotate left or right as it opens. Because the only way you're gonna get this door open with that motor and that slider system is if you can balance the forces and the moments with the track on the left and the track on the right so that all of the horsepower of that motor goes into opening the door, not into a uh, massive jam or, or a large amount of friction. So there's my wife coming home. She's probably wondering what I'm doing, why I'm standing here in the garage. You can say hello for the camera, dear, at least if you know I'm talking. See, door's opening. Oh, she's getting out of the car, wondering why is her husband filming the garage? Hmm.